that it begs the question what is the ulterior motive here is it domestic political uh, calculus that you have i'd like to make at least four or five quick points about this the first one being that since you mentioned uh, that my own expertise comes from uh, having studied indian intelligence operations in the past a historical analysis tells me clearly that this is unprecedented right previously uh, indian intelligence agencies that is precisely uh, to be precise the rndw has never carried out uh, a killing operation beyond its neighborhood right none of the intelligence agencies have actually carried that out so that is one of the quick reasons that makes it seems implausible until and unless trudeau actually puts out uh, some credible evidence evidence to um, to that extent right uh, the second reason why it simply seems uh, you know it's it's it seems unbelievable is that this particular case of nijar right this character itself is is quite complex in the sense that he has enmity with 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 different gangs within the gurudwara politics and he is also somebody who has been meddling with intelligence agencies that is obviously the indian intelligence would want him to be eliminated but if you see some of the recent events that developments that have happened right there is enough incentive for the pakistani intelligence to get to him right and there are other intelligence agencies which i mean it will lead to a lot of speculation here but there are other intelligence agencies also who have a vested interest in terms of rupturing india's um, uh, relationship with the west so they to have a reason to to uh, pull off an operation like this so that being the second point and the third point being just the nature of foreign intelligence cooperation especially when you look at the five eyes agreement right uh intelligence shared between these five countries it cannot be revealed you know that's that's the kind of agreement that these countries have so let's for a second assume that one of these countries has actually shared something uh, substantial with canada which has provoked canada to make this allegation then we we ought to have uh, we ought to ask two other questions right one is of course what about canada's counterintelligence right if at all you had this kind of information and you could not save him then what does it tell about your counterintelligence and what actions have been taken in terms of bringing to account your own counterintelligence agencies we don't see that kind of uh, questions being raised in canada or elsewhere especially given the fact that canada prides on being a democracy so that's question number 1 that we ought to ask uh, and uh, the second question is that on this on the basis of this allegation trudeau actually went on to make a public declaration on the in, on the uh, floor of the parliament and this i mean he expelled the indian diplomat from canada right so this is also something that is um, you know it's it's magnanimous to say the least you know because you don't you don't do something like that that could have significant impact on bilateral relations so if you went to that extent instead of silently conveying your concerns to the indian government and maybe trying to work it out you went to such a such a uh, such a such an extent that it begs the question what is the ulterior motive here is it domestic political uh, calculus that you have so there are a lot of question marks in this so these question marks give uh, added to the fact that india has never had a president of carrying out an operation in western capitals makes this slightly un- unbelievable that would be uh, the long and short of what i wanted to say from breaking news detailed analysis in depth interviews and explainers follow the times of india subscribe to our youtube channel don't forget to like our videos and hit the bell icon to stay updated with the latest